started talking about the magic of moving averages. And moving averages are a very simple tool that gives you lots of information and can be incredibly valuable to you as a trader. Moving averages help Forex traders make effective transactions by aiding them in evaluating the price history of a currency pair or related investment. More specifically, these averages make it easier for investors to interpret the price fluctuations for an asset by smoothing out their random movements. In other words, they take the noise out of the markets because as you know, price moves up and down continuously. And sometimes it gets so volatile and so irregular that you can't see a pattern developing or there's lots of noise with the highs and the lows and the opens and the closes. And moving averages can help you smooth this out so you can see more precisely what is happening. Now, technical analysts have harnessed a wide range of indicators over time, but the moving average stands out due to it being very, very simple, practical and useful. By using it, Forex traders can identify the price trends as well as support and resistance of a security in question. And to be honest with you, most indicators take a long time to master. Most chart analysis is time consuming and takes years of experience. Where a moving average can be applied to your charts by the time we're finished class tonight. Now, a moving average falls in the category called a lagging indicator because it accumulates past price points and then averages them to provide a technical analyst with a better sense of where security went over a period of time. Now, there are a handful of different moving averages. Okay. We have, and what we talk about when we just say moving average, most of the time we're talking about what's called an SMA or a simple moving average. And then we go all the way up to exponential moving averages and weighted moving averages and volume weighted moving averages. And these get a little bit more complex, but can give you more market information. Now, an average or a moving average is a very simple calculation. Most moving averages are based on the close price. You can take the medium price, the open price, the high price, whichever you like to select. Unfortunately, today with our Java charts, we can drop these on the charts with whatever specification we want. And we don't have to do any calculation by hand. But an average is simply a collection of so many data points divided by the number of data points and plotted on a chart. So the formula to calculate a moving average is simplistic. This can differ depending on the moving average type used. A simple moving average calculator uses the following formula. It sums up the closing values of all the periods being considered. One time frame moving average. So if you're looking at a 15 minute chart, it's one 15 minute period. If you're looking at a one hour chart, it's each one hour. It's whatever time we put a candlestick or a bar on the chart. So if we're looking at a one hour chart and we're using a 10 period moving average, we would go back for the last 10 hours and take the close of each one of those candlesticks or those bars for each one of those hours, add them together and divide it by 10. Not complicated, is it? Now, to give a simple example, the exponential moving average is giving more importance to current prices. Okay. All an exponential moving average does, it gives a little bit more weight to the most recent time frames. So in other words, if we were looking at gold, and gold was trading, and we say we're looking at a one hour chart, and gold, actually, let me, let's pop up a chart here. So let me pop up a... Here's gold, okay, we're looking at a one hour chart. Now, we can see gold made a lot of moves in this last time frame. If we were to take 
the close of this one, the close of that one, the close of this one, close of that candle, the close of this candle. Going back 10 candles, add them together and divide it by 10, it would give us a moving average. Okay. But it doesn't give any more weight or any more importance to the fact that the price has fallen significantly in the last few time frames. So if we were to go up to our indicator and come down to moving average, and we were to drop this on our chart, let's set up the format for it. So say we're, like I said, we're gonna use a 10 period moving average and we'll make this one a dark blue. We'll make it pretty broad so you can see it easily, class. And that's the dark blue line going through the price. Now we can see the moving average for the current price is here. Okay, if we were to take an exponential moving average and do the same thing, we're gonna make this dark red. We can see that there is a slight difference between the red and the blue line. The red line is reacting quicker to the price drop. You can see right now, they're almost identically the same. But the exponential moving average is a little bit lower because the price has reacted a little bit more negatively in the short term, in the last few time frames. So as you can see, putting it on your chart isn't difficult now. Using it to smooth out, I'm sorry. I just want to get back to my PowerPoint. Doesn't want to let me go back. Sorry about that. Okay, let's try it a different way. Okay, so calculating a, a, a 10 or 20 period. Now, we're only using 10 periods as an example because this is where it gets a little bit more important to you is determining what frame you want to use. Do you want to use a three period moving average, a five period moving average, a 10, a 20, 30? And we'll talk about that shortly. Now, calculating an SMA or a simple moving average was easy. Take the last 10 closes, add them together, divide it by 10. Calculating the EMA is a bit more complicated. As this indicator gives greater weight to more recent values in order to reduce the effect of lag. To determine the moving average, a Forex trader should begin by selecting a time period, for example, 10 days or 10 periods, and then calculating its SMA. Next, the investor should figure out the multiplier he will use to give the most recent data points greater emphasis. The size of this multiplier depends on how long the EMA is. Okay, so it's not an arbitrary decision, okay, or an arbitrary calculation. The investor should figure out the multiplier he will use to give the most recent data points greater emphasis. The size of the multiplier will depend on how long the EMA is. To calculate the multiplier, one can use the following formula. To find the multiplier, we would take two divided by the number of time periods. So if we were saying, say we're gonna stay with 10 time periods, we would take two and divide it by 10 plus one. So two divided by 10 is one fifth plus one. Or that would give us 18%. If we were using 20, it would give us a 9.52%. And we plug that in to the formula. Once the multiplier has been acquired, we've used the following formula, the multiplier times the closing price of the EMA for the and the previous day 
plus the EMA of the previous day. And that's how we determine the EMA. It's simply a weighted average that gives more importance to the most recent price moves. An exponential weighted moving average puts more emphasis on the current price. So you can see it on the charts. You see it right here on the example on your screen. Then we come to volume weighted moving average. Now, these are a whole bunch of different moving averages that you may never use. An EMA is important. A VWMA, a volume weighted moving average, you may never add into your trading strategy. But a volume weighted moving average is a simple moving average that considers the volume traded during that period. It is more accurate than the exponential moving average. Is it more accurate than the exponential moving average? The volume reflects supply and demand imbalances. Knowing when and where big players are buying and selling often means knowing when a new trend starts or ends. But adding a, or using a volume weighted moving average takes a lot more know-how and a lot more practice. Okay. Now, volume is critical in knowing when the market participants or what the market's doing. The problem is a lot of volume is basically all, is not known information. Okay. And if the market, if the charts don't have the correct information or the most up-to-date volume, the calculations can be off. So you have to know the charting service you're using and how reliable that volume is that they're printing out. Okay. Now, when you're trading Forex, the volume is irrelevant in Forex trading because any volume indicator offered by a Forex broker shows only the volume traded at that broker. So if you're using a broker's platform, like you're using the one on trade time and their charts, the only volume number you're getting is the number of volume going on in their trade. So this is one of the times you might want to consider an independent charting service that you're paying for, not a free charting service, but a paid charting service, because they get the data feeds with more information, but those data feeds are very expensive. Now, like I said, there are a couple other moving averages. Now, I've given you two handouts. One is a handout that I've put together from some very good articles and good research documents on moving averages. And it goes over everything we're talking in class, but gives it to you so you can research it or look at it later. I've also given you the introduction to technical analysis, which has a whole section on moving averages from investing.com. Please click the download button on your screen, no matter what device you're using now. You will not have access to these any other way, shape, or form at another time. So if you come to watch the recorded version, can't get them because you can't download the recorded version. So please download them now to whatever device you're using and then move them later when you have a minute to whatever device you want to have them on. Now, DMA or displaced moving average is a relatively new concept. A displaced moving average indicator is nothing but a simple moving average. Traders have found that the multiple time frames price is slicing through various SMAs, like there's no support and resistance. Then we see the price reacting from lower or higher levels. Because today with our Java charts and our information flow, we're able to do lots more and more advanced calculations. So to overcome the lag and the out of whack S SMAs and EMAs because the Forex market moves so fast, traders are cheating a bit. They're using an MA formula for an SMA, but shift the outcome forward or backward in time, which is an amazing little feat. So what you can do is take the, take the 10 period SMA for this hour, but shift it onto your chart so that one dot is, or that one dot is moved forward an hour. And the result is fascinating. Important support and resistance levels areas result using the same moving average, meaning only that a small trick influences the outcome. 
So here, what you can see on this chart up on your screen is you can see that the SMA is here. And by moving it just one dot, not changing the calculations, but moving it forward where we put the dot on the charts, it gives us a little bit different piece of information, which is, like I said, a fairly new technique, but we're finding that it works extremely well. So it's something you might want to learn a little bit more about and eventually include in your trading. So once a trader has calculated one or more moving averages of security, he can then use it for a wide range of purposes. Many investors utilize these indicators to determine what trend of security is following. For example, a currency pair could follow an uptrend or a period of rising values during a time frame. Most investors seek to identify these trends and try to profit from them. Alternatively, a security may do the opposite. However, investors should keep in mind that whether security is rising or falling in value, there are many different ways to try to generate terms from either a rise or descent. For example, as long as an asset are climbing in value, investors can simply buy them and obtain profits. They can also generate returns from depreciating securities through strategies such as shorting. So think of using moving averages in this case like trend lines, but a trend line is extremely rigid where a moving average is a slow flow and it can help you possibly see a trend easier. Now it's worth noting that many Forex traders have different preferences, may employ moving average for a variety of length. For example, someone looking to invest over the long term may look how a security performs over a time frame such as 200 trading days or 200 hours. So they might use a 200 period SMA or EMA, as this will give you insights into how the security or the financial instrument will perform in the long run. Alternatively, an individual focusing on short-term trades like most of us might hone in on how a currency pair is trading in a 20 period window or a 10 period window, as doing so will provide a sense of how the pair performed in a comparatively short time. So one of the most important things is learning what appropriate time values to place on the moving average that fits your trading style and your strategy. One more use for moving averages is measuring the momentum of a given security or how quickly it is either ascending or descending. The whole point of determining momentum is that once an asset starts moving in a certain direction, it will keep moving in that exact same way. So remember when we used to talk about, or when we talk about trend lines, we talk about trend lines giving you three pieces of information, telling you whether it's an asset's an uptrend or downtrend, and tells you the speed of that movement. So does a moving average. If a Forex trader can identify the momentum of a security, he can buy or sell the asset and even take out longer short positions on it. To single out this momentum, an investor can look at what the financial instruments did within a short, medium, and long-term period. For example, if a tra Forex trader wanted to ascertain a short-term momentum strategy of the euro US dollar, he could look at a 20-period SMA or EMA. If he instead desired a better sense of the pair's long-term momentum, he could look at it over a 100-period SMA. One more benefit of moving averages is that they can be used to determine an asset support and resistance. Securities will often find support in important moving averages. For example, if the USDJPY recently increased over the course of a week and then this upward trend gave way to a sharp drop, the moving average or the currency pair might find support at its 200 period moving average. Many Forex traders will expect securities to find support once they reach key averages and use other indicators in order to back up their forecasts. In addition, these same investors will frequently use an important average to predict when currency pairs will run into resistance during their upward trend. Now, if investors take time to master the moving averages, they will benefit the many benefits of prides 
will have a wide access of wide range of tools that they would not be able to harness otherwise. Now, we talked about the types of moving averages. We talked about the information you might get from a moving average, but those are generalities. How do you apply it to your trading theory or your trading process? In theory, there are an infinite number of simple moving averages. You can decide to use a one and a half period moving average or a three period or a nine period or an 18 and a half period. Okay. There's no law, there's no rule. So you can calculate or tell your indicator on your charts to give you an 11 period moving average. So if you're thinking that you can come up with some weird 46 SMA to beat the markets, let me stop you now. Okay. You can, but you're not gonna beat the markets. It's important to use the common SMAs or these are the ones that most traders will be using daily. While I do not advocate you following everyone else, it's important to know what other traders are looking at for clues. That's also, you're not the first guy in the market. There's millions of people trading in the market every day. There's all kinds of people that have come up and tried to come up with all their own stuff. Now, there's many different ways to use <clears throat> moving averages, but trying to come up with these weird periods of 46 days or 46 periods, because you think that's going to work better? It doesn't. Even deciding whether you're going to use a nine or a 10, it gives you very, very little inf change in information. So my rule of thumb is to stick with the most popular, the ones that have been used, they're used by thousands of traders that we know that they work well and we can use them easily. So a five period is the smallest period you want to use. And that's for the hyper trader. The short, the shorter the SMA, the more signals you will receive and the closer it will get to just duplicating price. The best way to use an SMA, a five period SMA, is as a trade trigger in conjunction with a longer SMA. Now this is the first time we mentioned it tonight and we'll talk about it a little bit more, but those are using multiple moving averages as a trading strategy or a piece of information. So. Like I said here, if you were to use a five period moving average and a 20 period moving average, and when the five crossed over and upward or under and downward over the longer period moving average, you might use that as a trade signal. The next and the most popular is a 10 SMA, a 10 period. And it's popular with short term traders, great for swing traders and day traders. And whether it's a nine or a 10, this is the one you should be looking at for CFD and Forex trading. Then we go to 20. This is the last stop on the bus for short-term traders. Beyond a 20 period SMA, you're basically looking at primary trends that might help you decide you want, you're interested in buying this asset or going long on this asset, but it's not gonna help you get a trade for a CFD or Forex in a day trade. Now, a 50 period moving average is used by traders as a gauge for midterm trends. And we can actually, as a popular moving average strategy, a crossover strategy using a five, a 10, and a 50. And then the farthest one out we wanna go is a 200 SMA. Now, again, if you're using a 15 minute chart, that SMA, if it's a five, a five period SMA on a 15 minute chart, that's only covering the last 75 minutes. If you're looking at a one hour chart, you're going back five one hours and that's kind of like covering the last five hours. Okay. As you know, for trading Forex to go back to a 20 period SMA is covering the last 20 hours of trading. But going any longer than that, you're going back for several days of trading and that doesn't really have any validity to us. Same thing with a 200 SMA when trading Forex and CFDs. It's for more longer term traders or to see a longer term trend. So some traders will tell you to try simple moving average trading system where you buy and sell if the price breaks the average on a closing basis. 
Unfortunately, this is not accurate. Oftentimes, stocks will take over or under the moving average to only continue in the primary direction of the trend. Now that I've given you just enough doubt before even attempting to trade with an SMA, let's review a few ways that you can make money. In the end, it comes down to what you feel comfortable with and what your trading style is. EMAs give you more and earlier signals, but it also gives you false and premature signals. And SMA provides less and later signals, but also less wrong signals during volatile markets. Now, when you are a short-term day trader, you need a moving average that is fast and reacts to price change immediately. That's why it's usually best for day traders to stick with the EMAs in the first place. When it comes to the period and the length, there are usually three specific moving averages you should be thinking about. A nine or 10 period, okay, a 21 or 20 period, and a 50 period. Now, these are known as fast and slow moving averages. Do you understand what why we would call one a slower moving average and another one a faster moving average. Well, the longer the time period, the slower it reacts to change in price. So whenever you're using multiple moving averages, the shorter the period, the faster it reacts. So when you're using two moving averages, you have a short moving, a short, a slow moving average and a fast moving average. So if you're using a 10 and a 20 period strategy or 10, 21 and 50, you would have a slow, a fast and a faster moving average. Well, what do you think happens when the slower moving average crosses over the medium moving average and remains and stretches out wider and wider from the long moving, longer term moving average, excuse me. It's telling you you have a strong uptrend. Why? Because the, the slower moving average reacts more slowly. The faster the moving average, here's the color key right here for you. Okay. The faster the moving average, the faster it's reacting. So uh, if you see a spread between the faster and the slower, you know you're in a moving, uh, in a uptrend. Okay. When it starts to converge the other way, you would be in a downtrend. When they cross over, price is shifting. And when we have these crossovers between multiple moving averages, we usually use these as triggers to make a trade. So swing traders have a very different approach and are typically on a higher time frame where they might use a four hour and a daily, okay, or a, because they're using different charts. So even though they might use the, they might use for a swing trade, a 50 and a hundred and a 200 period still does the same thing for them, but reacts slower because they're looking to hold a position longer. So once again, the best period for swing traders is a 20, 21 day, a 50 day and a 100, and then a 200 and don't go beyond 200. Now, now that you know about different differences between moving averages and how to choose the right period setting, we can look at three ways moving average can help to find a trade, ride trends and exit trades in a reliable way. First, moving averages help show us trend direction and filter and filter out trades. The 10 day or 10 period EMA is a favorite indicator to determine the major trend. It's called red light, green light because it is imperative in trading to remain on the correct side of the moving average to give yourself the best probability of success. When you are trading above a 10 period moving average, you have a green light to trade long. 
and the market is in positive mode and you should be thinking buy. Conversely, trading below the average is a red light. The market is in negative mode and you should be thinking sell. Established analysts use a fast EMA to stay on the right side of the market and to filter out trades in the wrong direction. Just this one tip can already make a huge difference in your trading when you are only trading in the direction, the right direction. So on your screen, you can see a very simple, but very reliable moving average crossover strategy. This is a 921, and they work way great as directional filters. When the price is above the EMA, a trader only looks to buy opportunities. When the price is below the EMA, a trader only looks for selling opportunities. Then you're always reading in the newspaper, especially Market Watch and CNN, Bloomberg, about the Death Cross and the Golden Cross. Now, in the chart I'm going to show you, I marked the Golden Cross and the Death Cross entries. Basically, you would enter a short position when the 50 crosses the 200 and enter a long position when the 50 crosses above the 200. And they call these the golden cross and the death cross. Okay, They sound nice. I don't use them, but you might want to consider using them. I trade in too short of a period to use a 200 period at any given time. Now, remember, when markets are in ranges, moving averages don't work that great. Okay. Moving averages don't work good in, in ranging markets. When price ranges back and forth between support and resistance, the moving average is usually somewhere in the middle of the range, and price does not respect it that much. Now, Bollinger Bands is a nice indicator that you can use it's developed using moving averages. You also have MACD, um, moving average convergence and divergence, which uses several different moving averages. But Bollinger Bands uses a moving average and uses a moving average crossover. When the price is within the band and moving above and below the moving average, it's giving you buy and sell signals. And we have a whole class of moving averages. So as you can see, the moving average are a multifaceted tool that can help be used in a variety of ways. Once a trader understands the implication of EMA versus SMA and the importance of, and the importance of the self-fulfilling fantasy prophecy and how to pick the right time settings, moving averages become an important tool in a trader's toolbox. So I hope I gave you some things to think about this evening and some general information on moving averages. And like I said, you have the handouts in there. Please make sure you download them. And we're going to go real quickly to a live chart and look at some moving averages on a live chart. So let me pop that up. Okay, here we were looking at gold and we saw the SMA and EMA. Okay, here uh, we're using the charts from investing.com. And I've dropped on here a 10 and a 20 strategy. And as you can see, when price crosses over, so the red is the 20, and the blue is the 10. So the blue is the faster. When the blue crosses underneath the red, gives the crossover. That's a sell signal. Okay. So you can see here you got a beautiful buy signal. Here you got a very nice close uh, sell signal. Okay. As the averages were crossing over and under each other. Now you could change this to a nine period and 21 period to make it more defined because if you remember I said nine or 10 or 20 or 21, and you can see it will have, we can change it a little bit. Let's change this to a nine. Okay. And it doesn't make that much of a change, but it pulls your crossovers back a little bit before. So you can decide and filter out, decide which ones work best for you. But as, as I, I said earlier, that 
very, you know, you could try a nine and a 21 or a 10 and a 20. They virtually give you the same results. They're, they're, they're such a little bit different, but you can decide which strategy or which one you're more comfortable with. You have to decide ultimately which one do you feel better working. Okay, again, here's a 50 and 100 period moving average on crude oil, but this is using a one week chart just to get the overall feeling of how the the long-term asset is being affected. And then here we have the Euro US dollar using a 12 and a 26 EMA. And again, crossover strategies can work very well, but also if we were to take a closed, okay. And let's make this one. I just want to make it a color other than my candlesticks. I think that yellow is horrible. I don't know how well you can see it. That's, I'm just trying to make it so you can see it easier. Let's try. There we go. So if we were to take this and just use it as a trend indicator, all we've done is take the noise out of the markets and we can see much better how price is moving more clearly without getting stuck in the greens and the reds of the candles and the highs and the lows and the wicks. And we can see a nice clean movement of the price. So again, it gives us lots of pieces of information and you can decide which ones of these pieces of information you like. Now, if you want, you can go to www.tradetime.com and open demo account, and they have a huge education section. And you can watch their videos on the different types of moving averages. And you can try on their demo charts and try to use these as much as you want and figure them out. And also, if you want, They'll sit you up with a one-on-one -on -one financial analyst who will help teach you on, you know, on the phone directly with how to use moving averages to fit into your trading. So thank you very much for joining us. And again, make sure you download those two handouts before I click off the webinar because you won't be able to access them again. Have a great night and thank you for supporting investing.com and trade time. Good evening now.